Hello and happy Wax on Wednesdays. This week, mixing it up with the mixed media and encaustic. And I have several papers here that were done just like last week's video uh, with the copy paper and um, the alcohol inks. And I'm going to take those one step or a few steps farther, actually. Last week, I put them in a journal. This week, I'm going to uh, mix it up and add some more mixed media. Here, I'm using a gel press plate and some R&F oil sticks. And these are great for adding more pattern, more texture. And I have a few other videos using the oil sticks. Commonly people use acrylic with the jelly plates, the gel press plates, but of course um, working with encaustic I can't use the acrylics. So um, the RNF paint sticks work great on the gel press plate and I have quite a few videos um, up on the Wax on Wednesdays that show how you can add some really great um, pattern and texture to your uh, to your monoprints using the RNF paint sticks. So I'm now I'm using some more alcohol ink on top of that. I fused that oil stick in. Those papers are already been embedded with the encaustic just like last week's video. So if you missed last, week, last week's video, go ahead and watch that one. I'll leave a link here so you can see exactly how I made those copy papers and infuse them with encaustic wax. And here, when I add the oil stick, and I'm just making another pattern, don't need any special tools to make some really great patterns on the gel press plate. And once I do that, I'm gonna fuse it in with a heat gun, using a heat gun here, because I'm working with paper, and so I'm gonna leave the torch aside for this project. But here, you can use stamps, you can use just stuff around your house, catalyst wedge, popsicle stick, but every time I add some more oil stick, I'm gonna fuse it into that paper, and that paper already has an initial encaustic wax layer infused in that paper, so that's going to help. By fusing the oil stick, I'm gonna help set that oil stick into the paper so it's not going to smudge when I go ahead and add on some other media. So by fusing the wax that's already embedded in the paper, it's helping to grab hold of those extra media that I've added onto the paper, such as the alcohol inks, the oil sticks. It's helping to grab hold of that and help it set up so it won't bleed uh, when I go ahead and use it on future projects here. So with these papers, I'm just having a whole lot of fun adding pattern and texture, and I'm not worried. I'm gonna go ahead and break these up into collage later further down the road so I'm not really worried about uh, a composition or a painting or something like that. I'm more concerned with texture and shapes and pattern and uh, using these as a background. So I'm really just having fun with making impressions in the paper and um, and worrying about the color and uh, and the patterns here on the paper. So it's just having a lot of fun. And I'm just going back and forth between the oil sticks and some more alcohol inks on top of that. So the only thing that I'm using, the only media that I'm using here is the RNF pigment sticks on the gel plate and then some extra uh, alcohol inks, the pinata alcohol inks uh, to uh, to further embellish the papers. And now to clean off that gel plate, I just used a little bit of baby oil on a paper towel and it cleans it right off. And usually I like to just keep building on layers and layers of the oil stick on the plate, but if it does come down to the fact that I want to completely change a color, then just a little dab of baby oil on a paper towel helps clean everything right off and you can start fresh on that gel plate. One of the questions that I commonly get asked is, can you use other brands of oil paint sticks with the gel press plate? And yes, you can, but the RNF sticks are so soft that it just lends, they lend themselves really well to this, to the gel plate, uh, gel press plate printing. Um, they're so soft, they're not going to tear at the uh, at the plate where other uh, paint sticks that I've have used about four different brands and they're just a little they have they're wonderful pigment sticks but they have um, a little bit drier consistency and so they tend to tear at the plate a little bit so that's why I recommend um, the RNF sticks for the gel press printing plate is because of they are so soft that they don't tear at the plate when you're trying to build up that pigment. 
And part of the fun with playing on with this gel press plate and the oil stick is that you don't really have to go out and buy any special tools. The, the tooliest tool that I have here is a catalyst wedge and a brayer. And other than that, it's just looking around to see what's going to make some really fantastic marks in the on the plate. And here I'm actually using the um, this script stamp and I'm just using the gel press plate as a stamping pad so with the oil stick so I've just used um, just dipped it right on the gel press plate and stamped it right on just using it as a pad so it's very it's so versatile I like just keeping the gel press plate um, next to me and um, and figuring out different ways to make pattern on that paper and that's the focus there is make pattern make texture on that paper um, that's fun for these collage backgrounds. So I'm just continuing going back and forth adding the alcohol inks and also the pigment sticks and making some more pattern fusing every time and setting all of that pigment in and I do just a just a giant stack of these papers all at once and so it's just like kind of like an assembly line not a lot of time to really um, to really think about it just really having fun with adding all of this pattern on the paper. And if you'd like to see a list of the supplies that I use this week, then they are all posted on the blog post for the video this week, which is on sherryreplogle.com. And I'll leave a link below so that you can go and see the full post for this video and all the supplies that I use this week. And also, if you're super excited about using encaustic on paper, which is one of my all-time favorite things, you can join me for Encausticology Paper Journey online workshop at any time with lifetime access and I will leave a link to that workshop below this video as well so you can see all of the details of this fun workshop of working with wax and paper. So I was going to break today's video up into a two part two week video and got too excited and just wanted to show you uh, the end of this so I'm going to go ahead and make some collage on ceramic tile using these papers. And these are just the four inch by four inch ceramic tiles like you would use in um, a bathroom. And I've gone ahead and cleaned them first with 91% alcohol and just using some pinata alcohol inks and the 91% alcohol as a base for these backgrounds. I want them really plain because I just I want those collage papers to really pop. So here I'm not, you can paint these tiles with the alcohol inks and have a whole bunch of fun with them uh, painting these, painting these tiles with just the alcohol inks. That, but that is a whole nother project for a whole nother video. But you can have a lot of fun just painting these tiles just with alcohol inks. But for this project, I just need a background for my collage papers. And my collage papers are the focal points. So I want them to pop out and not get lost um, in a really busy, uh, busy tile. So I just need a really pretty background using similar colors to the papers or a directly contrasting color uh, like the orange with the blues just to give them enough to to really have those make those collage papers pop. And these are tiles that you just that I just get from my local hardware store, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, anything like that. And I'm going to try to find them on Amazon for you and put them on the list for the uh, supply list on the blog. But I get them at the home improvement store and I get them by the huge box. Like there's uh, at least 100 in there uh, tiles when I get them because they're cheaper than if you buy them individually I find if you're going to use a lot of them I mean if you're just going to try out four of these then just get four but if you I use them a lot for acrylic pours and collage and there's just so many uses for these tiles that um, that I get them by the great big box and I find that they're so 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 much cheaper that way if you get them um, if you get them by the box so um, these are just standard ceramic tiles I make sure that they have a smooth finish. Um, nowadays, there are so many different tiles available in the home improvement store and a lot of them have that texture. I like the smooth the smooth finish, especially for the alcohol inks because they dry so pretty and, um, and shiny just without adding anything to them. They just look beautiful on these really plain, uh, just plain ceramic tiles. And there's different sizes that you can get too. So now you can get, um, I think you can get up to like a 12 by 12 or maybe even larger 
with the uh, with just plain a plain tile and so it would be fun to do a larger piece um, as well and they have rectangles and squares and different shapes and sizes and it might be a little bit heavy to frame but it would be pretty to do a big one as well but I like these little four by fours I love working in squares so these just really get me um, get me going these little tiles are just right up my alley for working in a square form. I'm gonna go ahead and add the uh, collage papers now, and I'm just gonna use Yes Paste for this. And I've cut the, I've both cut and torn pieces of the paper and, um, and gone ahead and found the pieces that I like that went with these tiles and have gonna carefully and clean as possible add this Yes Paste to it. And I want to make sure that I'm not seeping a bunch of glue out uh, because I don't want gloppy glue um, to, I'm going to add a resin finish to these and I don't want any, um, a gloppy mess going. So the, that is why I use the Yes Paste is because it's thicker and I, it's not going to ooze out and I can see it. Uh, there's several different ways I go about adhering uh, paper to different things this for this one I'm just like yes paste but if I was going to use another glue then um, it would be an archival book binders glue is the other glue that I use with the encaustic papers and those are pretty much the two glues that I stick with when I'm working with the encaustic papers now these just have these papers just have one layer of wax infused in them so it's not a lot of wax I can still feel that paper texture if I had a bunch of wax built up into these papers or on these papers, it would make them difficult to glue down. So um, with the copy paper, rice paper is even easier because it's thicker and it has, um, it can take more wax. So those are even easier to glue down. The copy paper absorbs that wax quicker. And, um, and so if you build up a bunch of wax, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be difficult to glue them down. So they just have that one one thin layer of wax and that's it and that um, I can still glue them and adhere them to a surface like these tiles that way. And these have all set out overnight so I make sure that they're really really dry and I have my handy dandy dollar store bin here with my very well used uh, yogurt cups. I just save them so for when I'm resining or doing a pour and that way everything is up off of the surface and uh, and ready to pour and I'm using art resin it's a two-part resin and I get one side when it's the resin and the hardener you add equal parts and mix it up and I stir it for at least three minutes just like the packaging every resin is different so make sure you follow the resin directions exactly because you don't want to go through all of this trouble of all of these stages and then have your resin not harden on you. So you want to make sure that you're measuring correctly and stirring correctly and everything is ready to go. And you also want to make sure that everything is completely, completely dust free because adding this resin on your, uh, your tiles is like putting a magnifying glass on everything. So if you have any glue that's showing or uh, anything um, that is astray or dust or um, cat or dog hair, then, uh, you know, Fluffy's hair is going to be like the focal point of that tile from now on if you, if you allow that to happen. So you want to make sure that you're really in a dust-free environment. So I usually take one day and do a big stack of these printed papers, take another day and do, uh, do the collaging on the tiles and then let them dry overnight and then go ahead and do an entire day of resining. And that way I don't have um, a big mess of everything and papers and everything all at once. And I can um, have a clean, really clean workspace for the, uh, for the resin. So I just get an assembly line going here and put four tiles in each bin and go ahead and resin them all in the same day. And I also make a tint over them afterwards to make sure that no dust gets on them while they're drying because they do take quite a while to cure. And resining does take some time. It, it, it is a little bit costly and it takes a little bit of patience and some time because it, you do want to babysit them for a while and go ahead and make sure you're watching out for air bubbles, which is what I was doing with the torch 
going in with just a really, really light flame just to get any air bubbles out that weren't popping on their own. And, um, and there I go ahead and do that. And I do it every few minutes until it starts to cure. So um, just very quickly with the, with the torch, I'm not keeping it in one place at all. Um, and if there's a stubborn one, I'll go in with a needle and pop it if the torch isn't working. I wanna make sure that, again, that all the air bubbles are out because you're really gonna zone in and focus on it. If there's one air bubble that's left when it's dry, then that's the first thing that you're gonna see. So you want to make sure that those air bubbles are out. So it does take a little bit, um, a little bit of of patience to uh, to have a resin day, but it's worth it in the end. It's a beautiful glass like finish for these collages. So I hope that you really enjoyed this Wax on Wednesdays, uh, mixing up the mixed media, and I will see you again next week for Wax on Wednesdays. Happy Wax on Wednesday.